Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day five of Plant-Based Telehealth Week, and to introduce today's doctor, the doctor du jour, is the co-founder of Plant-Based Telehealth, Dr. Lori Marvis. Who have you got for us today? Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Doctor. <laughs> That's okay. You call me Dr. Shepard. I, I was thinking of Dr. DeJour and I was thinking, I am never going to think of soup DeJour the same, but <laughs> we're well, starting up. Say, this has been, I'm yeah. sorry, this has been such a fun week getting to know the, the doctors that you have to do the consults and I'm learning so much. And, and I got to tell you, my favorite moment from yesterday was when Dr. Chris Miller invented a new, I don't know if she invented the word. But it, it's such a great word for the thing that drives me the most crazy in the plant-based world. And she named it guru syndrome. Oh, yes. I love yes. it. I no, love I, it. People that we, are uh, on the minutia yeah. instead of the big picture. I actually invented that term. So we have spoken many times in our doctor meetings about the guru syndrome because I get so many patients who hone in on, but Dr. Gregor says this, Dr. Medugal says this, Dr. Whoever says this, Dr. Whoever says that, and I'm trying to do it all because I love them all, but I can't do them. I'm like, stop. <laughs> the only doctor that matters right now is this one in front of you who's looking at you as a one person and we're going to decide together what's best for you. Absolutely. It's the guru syndrome. Yes. God, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to share that with Dr. Lyle. Oh, when talk to him, I, I, I couldn't figure out the name for it. It's when people major in minor <laughs> things. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's great. Uh, Yes, absolutely. But I hope, I hope this word catches on. At least now we know what to call it. Guru syndrome it is. Yes, absolutely. Share away. <laughs> um, but yes, but the, the Dr. Dujour, which I love. Oh my goodness. We're, we're serving up quite a special one today is Dr. Kim Shoyer, who's also a Colorado and who's amazing. I've known for years. And I will tell you, um, one of the most humble and kind people, but she is a phenomenal, not only doctor, but also an athlete. She would hike up mountains in Aspen. Yo, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> and she not only that, but she's super smart. She, you, you talk to her about her history. She's been in other countries helping build all sorts of cool stuff. She speaks Spanish. She speaks American Sign Language or speaks, I guess, signs. Um, she has a master's in this. I mean, just some crazy cool stuff. And you're going to be just so, so treated today. But and she's licensed in 20 states. But you guys check her out. She's phenomenal. And I can't wait to hear your conversation today. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Marvis. And I'll see you tomorrow for another great Dr. Du Jour. Excellent. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Shore. It's so nice to meet you. Hi, it is a pleasure to meet you. My I'm, pleasure. I'm so excited that uh, that you know sign language. I, you know, I I learned it when I was much younger, and, and I I forgot. You know, I can, <laughs> you I can still swear, but I can, I, I, for, I mean, I can still say I can I even say I love you. I can spell, but I I think it's such a beautiful language. It is. It's it's the most beautiful language, and I know I used to know. American Sign Language and Sri Lankan Sign Language because I lived in Sri Lanka for a while. But, uh, and I watch myself on video and think, wow, what am I saying? That's awesome. <laughs> but I love it. And it's great to use it with my deaf patients. And I use Spanish with my Spanish patients. And luckily I work with plant-based telehealth because we have people who speak French on plant-based telehealth, who speak Cantonese, who speak Spanish more than me. There's a couple of other people. So it's just awesome that we can, you know, work with people from all different er with languages other than just English. So it's great. That is so cool that you're that I just, you know, I never thought about that because deaf people need to see doctors too. And then they don't need an interpreter if the doctor speaks sign language. Right. It's so much better if they don't have a, a sign or uh, an interpreter there because it's really much more personal, you know? And so it's really nice. Um, well, to me, that's a great selling point right there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I wonder though, I, I, I you know, I, I'm not really connected with the deaf community. Like I was the blind community because I was a volunteer culinary instructor at the Braille Institute, but I wonder if there's a, a, a lot of a deaf people that are interested in plant-based. There are, there are um, growing groups in Rochester, New York, um, in different places around the country where deaf people are getting more interested. They don't have um, the access, which is, you know, a lot of people, whether they're hearing or deaf, don't have as much access as we would like. Um, so, yeah, I've, um, that's one of my goals is to get more access to the deaf community. 
Yeah. I'll never forget, you know, I haven't done uh, in-person speaking events since before mm-hmm. COVID, but a lot of times they would have interpreters there, you know, for conferences because uh, like even on the cruise, because there, there are deaf people that, that want to hear that. And I, I talk really fast. And so that's, that, they don't <laughs> always want that, but sometimes it, you, they, there would be a word in the talk where like, there's not a sign for it, like de novo right. lipogenesis, for example. <laughs> yep. You have to finger spell that out. And that's a long word. That is a long word. That's a, that's a great example of something you'd have to set up a, a sign for. You'd spell it out and set up a sign for it if you wanted to. That's um, so cool. And you're an athlete. That's, that's amazing too. Yes. Um, when I lived, I lived in Aspen for over 20 years. And when I was in Aspen, I kind of figured that I was in the, um, probably the top 2% of the country and the bottom 2% of Aspen in terms of athletes, because there are so many athletes out there. And uh, I just, for many, many years, when I was young, I was very athletic. And then when I hit puberty, I stopped growing up and I started growing out and I stopped becoming an athlete. Um, And then when I finally found lifestyle medicine, uh, I was able to not only lose weight, but I was also able to get more energy and my muscles got stronger and I got faster and I could go up mountains. And I just love being in nature, which is part of um, lifestyle medicine is getting out and moving more and being in nature. And it just, it's my way of de-stressing. Um, and so I would do things like, cause I worked, you know, long, long, long hours in Aspen. I would get up at five o'clock in the morning, put all my lights on, put the lights on the dogs and we'd go out and people would think, There were UFOs going around as I would go up the mountain and then come back down and then it would become light and I'd go to work. How did you first hear of lifestyle medicine? Oh, that's a good question. When I was 47, my mom had had breast cancer at 48. And I thought, how can I prevent myself from getting breast cancer? And at the same time, a friend of mine was going to nutrition school and she asked for a three day diet thing from me. And I thought, well, I've been a a vegetarian most of my life. However, I was a Milky Way vegetarian. Um, I was a junk food vegetarian. So I gave her my thing and I started doing research and she came back saying, you eat terribly. And that's probably one of the reasons you struggle with weight. Um, Let me, and I was like, I don't have time to cook. I don't know how to cook. She said, and I had never eaten a salad before. I hated salad. I hated green things. So at 47, she offered to cook for me for a month, which she did. And she made me have green smoothies every day. And after a month, my weight plummeted, my cholesterol, which was considered normal, but American normal plummeted. And, you know, so American normal means Americans have heart heart attacks and strokes. And mine was now in the heart attack proof range. And after the month. Uh, my energy got better. I slept better. I woke up at five o'clock in the morning, like, let's go, let's go to work instead of, uh, and so I started doing more research and taking classes. I watched forks over knives. I read the China study. I got angry. Why hadn't I been taught this in medical school and, uh, started using it with my patients. Then I got boarded with American Board of Lifestyle Medicine in the first group sat behind Dr. Greger, wanted to cheat, <laughs> but he, it was so exciting and just decided that sooner after several years, it was like, I need to just make this my practice. And I did. And it's great. And That's fantastic. So how long have you been on a plant-based diet? 10 years. That's fantastic. So I, I feel better in my fifties than I did in my late fifties than I did in my twenties. And, um, I have, it's changed people's lives. I have a little bit of a slideshow to show people to show some of the things that lifestyle medicine can do and why, but, uh, it's, you know, it's amazing. I not only make my patients healthier, but then their families get healthier. You know, I had somebody tell me Wednesday that her husband's now plant-based and she cannot believe it. My significant other went plant-based because he wanted to date me. And I said, okay, in my house, everything's clean because I'm a food addict and I can't have junk in my house. And so when you come over, it's clean. We go out, you can do whatever you want, but I have to have it clean in my house. He lost over 60 pounds. He got off of five medicines, several, uh, they were for cholesterol and blood pressure, five of them. Uh, And 
he's happier and healthier. And so I love not only affecting my patients, but then their partners and their mothers and their, you know, family members, and then the community. It's great. Now, we talk about that a little bit, because I'm very interested in addiction in general and food addiction specifically, because a lot of doctors don't even like that. I believe in it, by the way, because I feel I'm a food addict in recovery, but a lot of doctors don't, they shy away from that term. So if you wouldn't mind, talk a little bit about what you mean. I am a food addict. Well, I'm Kim Scheuer. I'm a chocoholic. There's no question. (laughs) And um, I do think there are some people who, like for me, when I start having a piece of chocolate or something, it's hard for me to stop. I crave more. My dopamine goes through the roof. And so I do think for some people, it is a, a true addiction where it's in your brain all the time. I want, I need, I want, I need. And so when I first started this, some of those cravings say, oh, you know, your sugar cravings get better after a while. Well, for me, if I restart, I go again. And so it's, it's interesting. And when I work with my patients, you know, why are you eating? Why are you sabotaging yourself? Because you know, some, a lot of my patients know what they need to do to be healthy, but it's really difficult, especially when we have so much coming in from so many different places that, um, you know, there's a lot of peer pressure. You know, people say, oh, you're getting too skinny. You know, why are you doing this? Why are you restricting? I'm like, I'm not restricting what I eat. I now eat way more than I used to. And I am so much more satisfied and I love the taste of my food. I will never go back um, because it's so good now, but it takes a while to get used to it. And then it takes a while to get used to the pressure of family, of friends. You go to a party, oh, just eat this. No, thank you. (laughs) You know, or if for some reason it comes into my house, it's either in my mouth or it's in the garbage. And for me, it has to be in the garbage. So um, I do talk to patients about, looking at their di- addiction, if they have that, you know, there's great books out there, Dopamine Nation, there's, um, you know, Thin by Design, there's, or Slim by Design, there's lots of, uh, you know, Dr. Lyle has some great information, Doug Lyle. So there's great things out there. Um, but for some people, it's very real. And, and so, yeah, I, yeah. I change my addiction from unhealthy to healthy foods. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you. Because I have a saying, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, or, or I got a new one, either in the trash or on your ass. Well, I mean, <laughs> honestly, this is how addicted I was. If it was even in the trash, I might go for it. Yeah. You know, and that to me is addiction, you know, so I would put it in the trash and then like, oh, there's not that much. In, you know, it's disgusting, but I did it. And it's not actually disgusting. It was what who I was. And I've changed that. And it's so nice to be able to do it. Um, And it's fascinating because it took me from the time I started doing this and becoming healthier and dealing with the food in a different way to probably seven years later where I still considered myself overweight and heavy. And it took me over seven years to say, oh, wait a minute, I'm no longer the person I was and I am healthy now, you know, and that's, that's a neat feeling. You don't have any pictures, do you, of your former self? Oh, no, I burned them. (laughs) You burned? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I did. I, um, it was, I mean, some, probably my mom or somebody else has some pictures, but I hate seeing myself bigger. Uh I was, you know, uh, at some points, 50 pounds heavier. And I, um, you know, that's a third of my body. You know, that's 50 pounds heavy. Exactly. I know. It's so, that's. Because I'm a small, like you, I'm a smaller woman now. You know? I know it's so weird. Like I didn't know I had bones in places like my wrist. Right? Seeing <laughs> my, yeah. It's awesome. Seeing my clavicles. Yeah, I, again. I love it. You know, it's funny because, you know, people shouldn't experience any shame if they have this problem exactly. with those foods, because I mean, I mean, even in uh, pop culture television, I mean, there was, uh, I believe George Costanza ate out of the trash once Miranda yep. from sex in the right. city. So it's, it's a real thing that, yeah. that people do. So that's why garbage disposal is even better. Cause then. Yes. You can't- or down the street, you know, get it away. I mean, there's like, there's lots of trips and tricks and tips that I use with myself still and with patients, you know, and it's easier and easier over time. There's no question. Like now it was funny. I was a cheeseaholic. I used to eat cheese five times a day, at least, you know, and then I went plant-based. And then after a year I went to Italy 
And I was like, I'm in Italy. I'm going to have some cheese and stuff. And after four days, I had gained maybe six, seven, eight pounds. I was like, uh, I felt terrible. And I thought, this is how I felt all the time before. And I'd forgotten. And I'll never do that again. I never want to feel like that again. So it's fascinating um, to learn in my own self, you know, how, what health actually feels like and then, and then lose it for a sec, you know, short period of time. It was only four days that time. And then come back and say, never again, easy. Right. What, did you find out about lifestyle medicine before finding out about a plant-based diet or do they come together? Uh, plant-based diet first because of my friend who told me I ate like crap. And then also as I was reading, like I, I was in, in, med, in residency in, in the 1990s and in medical school in residency in the 90s. And I started looking at um, Dean, Dr. Dean Ornish's work where he reversed heart disease in the 90s. Why wasn't I taught this? It was crazy. And then I was mad. I was truly angry that I had been not treating my patients appropriately for years. And so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting. So then I started getting into that, learning that because food makes a huge amount of difference. No question, biggest thing there, but movement makes a difference. Stress reduction as, as um, uh, Dr. Miller said, stress reduction is so important for people. And um, you know, we live in a high stress world right now a really high stress world. So learning how to deal with some of the stressors that come is very important. Sleep, who knew that sleep was important, but it makes a huge difference to medical issues. Um, you know, avoiding, yeah, all of that is so important. So the combination makes a huge difference. I love, love, love the food component. I start with the food component with most of my patients, but at plant-based telehealth, we often get patients who come in or people who come to see us because they're already on the food component and things aren't quite right. So yes, you need regular medication sometimes or a th somebody who knows how to adjust medications you're on to take you off medications that you're on if you're doing this and, um, and you're not feeling well, well, it could be you know side effects from the medications that you don't need anymore. So those are the things that, you know, those components are important too caring about yourself. You know, there, I've got so many patients and people who forget to take care of themselves because if they don't, they can't take care of others. So those are some of them. Yeah, I agree. Sleep is often the most overlooked, even maybe more than exercise. We have Dr. Chilla Varesh from the True North Health Center coming on next uh, Thursday, I believe, to talk wonderful. about sleep. But we have a wonderful comment from John McGowan. He says, Dr. Scheuer is my neighbor and she's changing the way my neighbors and I are eating. She's hosting <laughs> a, v a neighborhood vegan potluck tonight. We learn from one another. That's pretty cool. It's awesome. I, I moved from Aspen to Salida about a year ago. And in the meantime, I think there are now uh, at least eight, 10 couples and families in my area who are now being more are more plant-based and it's so exciting and I love it it just makes me so happy and they're feeling healthier losing weight and John love you <laughs> I'll see you later that's, that's pretty awesome. cool god I'd love to have a potluck with my doctor uh, JL says I can relate chocolate is a trigger for her and Judy said life became much easier when the husband went plant-based of course it is I feel so bad for people in uh, divided marriages that's got to be mm -hmm. true difficult. There, but there's techniques you can use. I mean, I had a divided relationship for a while, but over the years, your partner can change you know, with my patients, you know, they tend to, they tend to, if you're cooking, eat what you cook, they tend to feel better and then start to do it more. So yes, it is way more difficult in a divided household, but there's options. There's ways to do it. Right. Uh, Stacy Westlake says, yay, Dr. Scheuer is my doctor and hero, or maybe Shiro. Stacy, <laughs> That's so cool. I'm going to post a link if people want to get a private consult with you. It's in the chat. It's in the show notes, but I'll also oh, post it in the chats. Uh, Victoria says, do you have patients who struggle with underweight and what is your recommendation to that? Absolutely. I do. I do. And the first thing is to figure out one, are you truly underweight? Two, why are you underweight? And then three, what are you doing that already so that we can work on that to get you to an appropriate weight for you? 
we also live in a society where now we think that normal weight is underweight. You know, that is the, the, it's just like, I'm, I got thin too late in the equation because it's, 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 you watch a movie from the fifties yeah. and, all, it, you know, with the exception of maybe like one character actor, like Stubby K or uh, I, I forget the nanny and uh, Gone with the Wind, everybody's really lean. Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't considered underweight. Right. It's very interesting when you go to different countries and you see people who live differently and don't eat the standard American diet or trying to deal with family members who are concerned because you're losing too much or things like that. Now, there are people who are truly underweight and I do deal with that and I help them with that. But again, I need to find out why and, and if it's true, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. I just saw a question from Melissa. Do you specifically work with people and their food addiction? Uh, do I specifically work with people in their food addiction? Or maybe can you specifically work with people? I, I can. I work with lots of different people. I, I work with people who are on medications um, that want to get off of them or want to avoid getting on them. I work with people who are obese. I work with people who are have diabetes, who have some food addiction. So I definitely do. Um, depression, you know, general medical problems. I work with I work with kids. I work with everybody. So um, great. That's and awesome. and also in our group, we have in plant-based telehealth, we have doctors who are very, very good at lots of different things like Dr. Miller with um, autoimmune, like um, Dr. Clapper, who's amazing. You know, everybody knows him. Um, Dr. Zhu, who works with food and um, Dr. Uh, Fontaine and, and uh, Dr. Pierce, who are very much in, who do women's health, um, you know, uh, Dr. Davis, who's amazing. So, I mean, I work with, and, and Dr. Lori Marvis, who's in, in, in brilliant at um, diabetes and things, and we work together. So we are individual doctors who see our patients, but we also consult with each other. So I have so many people in my practice that if I'm not hundred percent sure, either I can ask them or I can send my patient to them for a consult. So I am blessed uh, with working with such incredible people. All right. Colleen says cheese is so hard to give up. Can you talk a little bit about why that is for people? Well, um, cheese is addictive. It has a casomorphine in it, which is the same as a morphine, which increases your dopamine in your brain. It's made, to, it's, it's full of fat. It's full of salt. It's, you know, there's lots of reasons that cheese are, is addictive and it's so unhealthy. So there's lots of good information out there. Um, Dr. Neil Barnard wrote the cheese trap, which is amazing. There's lots of reasons. And it's funny because that's what most of my patients have a hard time giving up. And I was, as I said, I was a cheeseaholic. I do not miss it. I think it is the most disgusting thing now. I mean, if you ever want to really go off of cheese, go to a cheese factory and smell it. It's, it smells like fungus, foot fungus, um, but it's not healthy for the, the animals that produce the cheese. It's not healthy for us. There's a huge um, connection with cheese and heart disease, breast cancer. You know, there's, it's just not healthy. And there's lots of ways to make your food taste delicious without cheese. Nutritional yeast is an option you can use. There's lots of other, like I make a cashew. Um, if, if you can eat fat, uh, you know, nuts and seeds. Uh, um, I make a lasagna that tastes amazing, you know, with, with a cashew uh, cheese, you know, instead of regular cheese. And I make the cheese myself. I, I find one thing I do find, and I don't know if you find this chef AJ, but um, processed, processed plant-based foods are not as delicious overall to me, and they're not as healthy for sure. And so I, I have some people that bridge the gap by going to some processed cheeses, some plant-based cheeses, and some who just skip it. When I was doing, when I first started doing this, there were no good tasting cheeses out there, uh, plant-based cheeses. And so, um, but if you want, you can start trying that and then cut that down because they, they are processed and they're trying to get you away from processed foods. Right, yeah, that's great. So how did you get involved with plant-based telehealth? Oh my gosh, I got so lucky. <laughs> I got so lucky. So um, 
Basically, I have known, as, as Dr. Lori Marvis said, I've known her for many years, and Dr. Chris Miller, I used to work with in uh, Aspen. And so when they started, I was getting more into lifestyle medicine. I have my own um, practice, Doc's Lifestyle Medicine, with my partner, Derek Olson. So uh, I'd already started doing that, but uh, we, they contacted me and said, are you interested? I'm like, yes, please. And um, I love what they do. I love Anthony who, run, you know, helps run it with, and I just, I love everybody that they brought on because doing your own thing is one thing, but having others to, you know, to work with, it's a community and community is very important. And uh, so it's been wonderful. I can't say enough about the people I've learned from, worked with and helped people with. Great. So I got a couple of people sent in questions in advance, and this one is from Mary. Do any of the doctors in your company uh, have any experience or recommendations for plasma cell vulvitis or lichen planus? Lichen planus. Um, that is a really good question. We did have a um, plant-based uh, dermatologist come on recently, who would be wonderful. And we could always ask, I don't, I have treated that myself in um, my regular practice, but I have in my traditional medical practice, I haven't treated it through plant-based telehealth yet. And I don't know if others have, but best way to do it is, is get in contact with us. And again, we can reach out to other people who might have some ideas too, if we don't know the answer. Great, thanks. And question from Monarch. What is the first thing Dr. Scheuer would suggest for someone chronically low in iron? Okay. Um, first thing I would suggest is find out why you're chronically low in iron. That's the most important thing. And then um, how you're eating, what you're eating. I find that, you know, you can, if you're drinking tea with your salad, you can block iron absorption if you are. So you want to make sure you're postponing your teas for about an hour after you eat. If you have, if you have like green tea, um, you want to make sure with your big salad, lots of like leafy greens that you want to have some citrus fruit in there, which will help the absorption. So more than anything, let's find out why you're chronically low and what that means to you. And then we'll work on trying to get you up. That's great. Thank you. You know, I've, I've read in your bio, so you're a chip facilitator. Yes. Oops, sorry. That's cool. <laughs> well, that's um, lifestyle medicine at its finest. I love chip. So when I was in Aspen, we worked with, and we still do, with um, Picking County employees and working, we worked, we led, I've led several chip programs with Picking County employees and the changes are incredible. We all the people who are in lifestyle medicine know it works, but it just still shocks you when it works so well, so quickly. And I love CHIP. So CHIP, for people who don't know, CHIP is the Complete Health Improvement Program. Um, it's Hans Deal was one of the first people who set that up. And it's a uh, multi, so it's several, it's three months worth, basically. You can be done different ways. I, my first CHIP program that I taught or that I facilitated we started day one in person and then COVID hit. So we had to convince the county that we wanted to switch it over to online and we switched it to online. And during the year, the last year and a half or so of COVID, I've seen people, I've seen so many people get unhealthier with the stress and the eating at home and, and eating too much and not exercising. But our CHIP participants have lost weight, they've gotten off of medications, they've been happier, they've been healthier. And it's a wonderful way to do th um, to be with a group of people who, um, who, who get healthier together by doing lifestyle medicine, basically lifestyle, lifestyle changes. The medicine part comes in when you have a doctor who can say, okay, you're on a blood pressure medicine or a, a, a diabetes medicine, we need to get you off that. That's the medical part, and it's awesome. Yeah. I took the chip program like eleven years ago in person. Oh. It was wonderful, isn't it great? I yeah. the community it was just it was just a lot of fun. I'm, I've had Dr. Deal on the show many times. It was just He's a wonderful one, experience. He's so wonderful, yeah, it's great. 
Yeah. So JL says, my dad had to go into a craft cheese factory to test the air purity for contaminants. And he said there was cheese all over the floor and everywhere. And the whole place was a mess. Well, good to know. I don't think people realize that our government allows a certain amount of parts per million of blood, pus and feces in the in the cheese. I think I mean, it's just so disgusting when you think what's in it, like as good as it may be or as addictive. No offense. I don't want to eat shit personally. Right. Exactly. And, And think about think about hot dogs that we give to kids or salami or, you know, the processed meats. It's, if we knew, if we went to the factories, if we were allowed to, which we're not allowed to a lot of the times, there's no way people would eat this and do this to, you know, to themselves or other animals, you know, other beings. When you, I mean, when people, I mean, even, even when I ate meat, which was for a very brief period, I didn't eat hot dogs. I mean, I knew what went in them, everything on the floor, the lips, the anus. I mean, that is so gross. It is so bizarre that we allow, that we think that's healthy for our, our children. And so it starts so young. We've got to start working on educating our children young so that they don't have to break the addictions that they have later to junk. You know, it would be so easy. Colleen is saying, um, are there any good tasting cheeses, any recommendations? I'm assuming she means plant-based cheeses. So, yeah. I mean, they're very high in fat generally, yeah. but I don't know because meat. I don't eat them. Yeah. No, they're too I high in fat for me, but as far as taste, my husband loves the ones from Miyoko's Creamery. He says, yeah. they're, you know, he can have his all Jack Spratt, you know, I'm Jack Spratt can eat no fat. No, he's Jack Spratt. I'm the <laughs> whatever I, he can eat. I can eat no lean. He's Jeff, whatever the, the rhyme, but, but he says that's very good. And I know there's kite Hill and there's a lot of them. You just have to be careful because some of the plant-based cheese, well, they're mostly plant-based, but it was really interesting how some actually still have casein. There are soy cheeses that are, I still have the casein and that's the addictive pr- yeah. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's cheese is fat and salt. That's what people like, you know? Yes. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, if you're going to be healthy, you want to go to as most, most, as much whole food plant-based as possible, which means you start cooking for yourself. And for somebody who never cooked before, it was a learning experience. So watch Chef AJ's videos because that's how I learned some of it, how to make it right. easy and healthy. And delicious. Do you, do you cook for yourself every day? Do you batch cook? Do you use an Instant Pot or an air fryer? Oh my gosh. My favorite things are my Instant Pot, my um, Vitamix and my air fryer. Those are my three favorite things. I am, I used to be horrible in the kitchen. Like my job in the kitchen was to wash the dishes, eat and wash the dishes. Now I can actually cook some things, which is really fun. And I'm trying one new thing a week, but I batch cook. So I make a huge, I love grains. I mean, I'm a big, you know, whole grain person um, and complex carbohydrates. So I make on, I make a bunch of oat groats and I make a bunch of, I like red rice with some, uh, farro and a bunch of other, I mix a bunch of grains together. So I make a huge pot of the groats and a huge pot of the other grains. And that way I can easily just grab it and put whatever, like if I want to have a bunch of spinach on my grains with some tomatoes and carrots and peppers, and I just put it on. And so I'll do a batch cook on the weekend and have it all ready in little containers. So I can just grab and go. And it's fun. I am lucky that my partner still cooks for me quite a bit though. So. I was looking with my glasses on at your bookshelf. I see how not to die, how not to diet. It looks like maybe mastering diabetes, reverse heart disease. Am I right? Am I? Oh, yes. Clearly. I've got, you know, all kinds. I love Undo It with my Dean Ornish. I love Dr. Greger. He's amazing. Um, Fiber fueled, uh, fast food genocide. I've got Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, Proteinaholic by Dr. Garth Davis. you know, prevent reverse heart disease. You know, these are some of the books I have. I've got Breasts, the Owner's Manual by Dr. Christy Funk. Amazing. Any woman, any mother, any daughter, any man who loves women should read that book. Great book. The Cheese Trap, Rip Elselston, you know, everything. And this everything is all- except Chef AJ's books. I got to get that. I'm just My- I know. Absolutely. I'm funny. You know, it's interesting though, that you waited until a year before the age of your mother being diagnosed with breast cancer to make any changes. So like, you just weren't worried for the first 46 years. It didn't hit me. I didn't, it it wasn't real. And then it became real. And, um, and again, I thought I was healthy. You know, I, I thought I was healthy until I truly became healthy. And, uh, and then, you know, it, the difference is amazing. I, I, again, I feel better in my fifties than I did in my twenties. 
Yeah, which so is I, that's how I say in my sixties, that's for sure. Yeah. Did, did you get any genetic testing for the breast cancer in your family? I did not. She was the only one who had breast cancer. Although my grandmother had colon cancer. Now I no longer worry about that with my diet because learning what I did the way I ate before, first of all, okay, this is a little graphic, but I used to think that it was normal to poop uh, every three to five days once, you know, once every three to five days. And I did not realize that that is unhealthy. And that's a marker for colon cancer and breast cancer and things like that. So when I started learning and changing, I learned so much that I wish I'd been taught in medical school. And uh, so uh, I know I, I do things specifically for Alzheimer's in my family. There's GI problems in my family. There's breast cancer in my family. Um, you know, so I'm very specific now about using my food as medicine and my exercise as medicine and my de-stressing as medicine, my sleep as medicine, you know, because I've learned it. Sounds like a good name for a book. You can write everything I wish I learned in medical school. Yeah. Well, I was actually, that's a great idea or didn't learn in medical school. I, I, my, I was thinking about, um, hi, I'm a tofu holic because now I'm a tofu holic rather than a cheese holic, but. Um, um, Susan says if a provider wanted to be with plant-based medicine, plant-based telehealth, who would they contact Dr. Marvis somehow? Through- yeah. So they would contact Dr. Marvis, um, you know, where we've grown quite a bit right now and, uh, I'm sure we will grow more and more in the future. So Dr. Marvis is the place to go. Great. And Susanna says, do plant-based telehealth doctors take calls from Canada? And it's not a call, right? It's like a zoom like this. Yes. So yes, we do. Um, we actually have all over the world. I've seen patients from or people from uh, Germany and Israel and South America and Canada. So yes, we do. And uh, we, we'd be happy to help with whatever ne- needs you have. Yeah. So here's a question. Can you please ask the doctor if you have something like chocolate in your house and give into the addiction? Is it horrible? if you chew it and spit it out or is <laughs> that, you know, you know, it's funny because there is a, there is a, I, I was hospitalized in my teens for anorexia and there was a faction of the people that that like everybody's anorexia was different. Like right. most of us just, we just didn't eat at all. But then there was a group of, I don't know the name of that disorder, but they would, they would chew, but they would never swallow. And yep. then they would spit it out. And, you know, it's really interesting because it kind of made me sick to watch people do that, not in the hospital, but in culinary school, because I went to in-person culinary school, the teachers, they have to taste everything from everybody and they don't want to do that because it's then they're eating a lot. So they would spit. And I, I thought, I thought that was odd because part of the enjoyment of eating is when you swallow it. And, and even as a chef, you can, you can't taste it until you've swallowed it. Right. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think going into why you do that, and why you feel you need to do that is important. Um, and I don't, I mean, it's, it's not as unhealthy as probably swallowing it, but it's not healthy either. So let's work on getting you healthy. Yeah, that's great. I love it. Yeah. Here's somebody said everything I wish I learned in medical school, but didn't by Dr. Kim Scheuer. So let I love it. Okay, so <laughs> get off. I'd like to see the first draft by. <laughs> so well, I will have to um, acknowledge you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Were you, where were you born? Did you always live in Colorado? No, I was born in Pennsylvania, grew up till I was about seven years old there and then moved to New York, was an East Coaster most of my life who felt that I should have been born in Colorado. I love the mountains. I love Colorado. And I even didn't go to Colorado for college because I figured I'd ski my life away. <laughs> um, but I am so happy to be here now. Yeah. Isn't, you know how, when they show states in different colors with obesity, that Colorado often is the only one that's not red. It's fascinating. We're getting redder. We are in terms of, of obesity in Colorado. Unfortunately, there's certain areas that aren't, but um, I will leave where I live and go to Denver and to fly other places. And it is fascinating because it's a totally different world to me. And I forget that people need this information and need this help. Um, because, you know, my little, with COVID, I've been just in my neighborhood, just meeting people outside. That's how I've, how I've uh, corrupted uh, quite a bit of my neighbors to be healthier by just meeting them on the street and walking, you know, on the roads. And 
Um, so yes, I do love that I live in a healthier place, but it's not always healthy. And in fact, Aspen was very fascinating because there's a lot of skinny people in Aspen, but they, a lot of them were, um, into diets that were unhealthful, completely unhealthful. Like they would, they'd come in and say, you know, I would, I'm on, on this diet. I'm like, well, I can give you methamphetamines or cocaine and you can get thinner, but that's not healthy. And so my whole deal with um, plant-based telehealth and with the work I do is health. You know, the, the weight comes off when you're healthy, but um, there's a lot of false information out there about what's truly healthy and for a long-term, not just short-term. It seems that Colorado attracts a lot of athletes or physically active people, mm-hmm. or maybe it's just the other way around. That- but you can't out exercise your diet. You can't out exercise a poor lifestyle. For example, if you're a smoker and run, you know, 10 miles a day, that running helps, but it doesn't outdo the damage that the smoking will do. Remember that movie with William Hurt? I forget what it was called. Body something. He, he, he went running and then he lit up a cigarette. It's a famous movie from a long time ago. I can't ago. remember it, but yeah, it's body something. Guys, if you know it, put it in the chat. I'm getting stuck. But it was that was actually very funny. when We see it that. quite often. I mean, you know, and it's, again, it's what your goal is. And for me, it's health of the individual, your community, the planet, everything. What are you doing for exercise these days? Oh, I love, love, love to get out in the nature. So I hike my dogs, I bike. Um, in the winter, I will ski, um, cross country, downhill, any kind, um, back country. Uh, I, I have, I was a bad patient for a while um, because as I'm older and I'm smaller, I have to worry about osteoporosis. And so I was never good at doing weightlifting or you know resistance exercises. And I've now gotten into it several days a week where I add resistance exercises, which is so important, um, and balance exercises. So oh, it's important. And I just don't do it. I'm like terrible. I know know, that's this is the thing. Knowing and doing are two different things. Right. Right. So getting a group, you know, getting on what I've done is I go out, walk to my neighbor's house, pick her up, we walk to my other neighbor's house who has a gym and we do it together. So getting a group that will keep you on target and doing it is a helpful thing. Getting online. Now with the one thing, you know, with COVID is we do a lot of Zooming and, and make time to, to do a class twice a week, two to three times a week where you just do it at home. It's, it's very important. Um, and, and for me, it's funny because they all, my friends are, are teasing me because I will do it every single time because if I don't, I will stop completely. And I think that's part of the addict in me. I have to continue doing it because if I stop, I stop. And then I won't do it again. So I know myself and I know what I need to do. So let's get you started, Chef AJ. Yeah, exactly. And not stop. <laughs> I'm happy to text you every couple of days. If you want. Okay. Oh my God. No, I shouldn't say <laughs> Should Nobody put the name of the Oh, body heat. Thank you, Derek. I knew it was, it had the word body in it. Yeah, that was very funny. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. So do you have a lot of patients that come to you like on the keto diet and, and how do you I don't know if the word word is convinced because I find that's one of the most difficult things because people that go on a keto diet, they, they experience some health benefits in the short term and they lose weight quicker. And it's so hard to convince them how unhealthy it is. I find it is, it's difficult, but, um, it, I, I go to where the person is, you know, and so some people come into me and they want to change over, but they don't believe me. And I'm just, I, you know, I tell them, do it for two weeks, do what I say for two weeks. I'm not asking for forever and tell me how you feel after that. And then they come back shocked, like, oh, you know, after the, and I warn them, if you're going to go from a keto diet to a plant-based diet, and if it's a a non-plant-based keto diet, you are going to have some withdrawals. You're going to feel bad for a couple of days and feel unhealthy and not good, but that's going through withdrawals. Um, Some people, I show them the um, science. Some people, I show them the game changers, because if they're athletic and they're on the keto diet for athlete athleticism, I show them that some people, I show them um, mastering diabetes information because yeah, their hemoglobin A1C comes down, but their insulin sensitivity does not improve. Their insulin resistance is worse. So I start where, where the person is and try and build on that. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm successful a lot of the times, but there's some times that I'm not. And, um, I feel sad about that, but I, you know, we, 
I try my best. I try my best. Do you have a typical patient that comes to you for telehealth, particular type? I mean, because I know that like Dr. Miller loves working with people with autoimmune right. disease. So again, I, I have a whole, I'm a generalist, so I have a whole variety of things, but I do have diabetics. I've um, definitely uh, gotten people off of diabetic medicines, including insulin and some other meds or used meds when they need it. Um, I've had obese people. I've had people with heart issues, concerns. I've had um, people who just want to generally feel better. Um, people who want to avoid getting on medicine. So I, I deal with almost everything and everyone, and I love it. Right. Um, Has anyone in your family other than your husband joined you on this path of healthy eating and living? It's an interesting question. I gave my brother um, for his birthday, the chip program. And I, for my brother and his son, for my birthday, I said, I really, really, really want you to give me the birthday present of an hour and a half and made them watch the game changers with me, you know? So that was their gift to me. And I think I'm making inroads, but I wish it was better. My father, interestingly enough, who is no longer with us, um, was a cardiologist and he, you know, made our whole family switch from whole milk to skim milk and all that. By the end of his life, you know, at first he was like, well, I'm 84. Why would I do this? If I was 44, I would. I'm like, dad, look at the research, look at your, and he actually was plant-based by the end of his life. So that was great. And that I think helped his, him, you know, live a little bit longer and a little bit healthier. Nice. Anna Maria says, do you believe dance exercises and healthy food are enough to lose weight? Are enough? Well, I think they're awesome. I think Dance, exercise, and healthy food are wonderful, both of them. Um, it depends on why you have, haven't lost weight and how much you eat and, um, you know, and what you consider healthy versus what I consider healthy. But also stress is a big important thing with weight. So if you're stressed all the time and your cortisol is high all the time, that can be a problem. But I think those are great first steps. Absolutely fantastic. And maybe enough. Great um, question. What do you think of mush raw mushrooms? Interesting. So I think that if you look at uh, Dr. Greger's information about cooking mushrooms, that's a little bit healthier. And also Dr. Furman suggests that too. So I tend to just go more with cooked mushrooms. Um, Chef AJ, what do you do? Okay. So I'm not a picky eater. I don't like mushrooms, but ah. I'll eat them one way I will eat them one way only with some spices from local spicery, like pepperoni spice or Tosca del Sol mm -hmm. and in the air fryer. And then I can choke them down. There's something about the texture that's just creepy to me. Uh, but when they're air fried, they're all right. Yeah. I think the research is that it's better to have those mushrooms cooked and you don't need a lot of mushrooms. Like for people who don't like mushrooms, you know, a little thumbnail of a mushroom every day is really good in your G-bombs, your greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, and uh, berries, and a little bit of nuts and seeds, depending if you can have, or certainly seeds, um, are very, very anti-cancer uh, pro pro producing. So that's, it's a really good thing to have. If I may ask, if, if you're comfortable talking about it, how did your mom do with her breast cancer? She's doing well. Um, she's, she's, yeah, she's now in her... Oh, I shouldn't say that. She's many, 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 many years out of breast cancer. So that's great. <laughs> Did she change her diet at all or get some of the information? Interesting. She was, she ate a lot of fruits and veggies, um, you know, growing it, during my childhood. She was a very much into fruits and veggies and worried about her weight and all that. Um, she does some things that I don't love that aren't great for breast cancer. Um, I wish she exercised more. I wish, you know, there's a couple of things, but um, she's doing great. And that makes me happy. And they caught it really early on her. Well, that's not true. Actually, she was not early. Um, she wasn't late. So that was good. But. I've always been interested in why, why exercise plays a role in cancer, because obviously this is not scientific, but when I think to every single person I've personally known that had cancer, none of them exercised at all. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, there is research on, on how cancer works, but uh, um, excuse me, how exercise works in cancer, but I think it does. Um, and I may be wrong on this. Uh, it does help 
turn on and off certain genes that promote inflammation and cancer and things like that. So exercising a huge, a big exercise itself is, is inflammatory, but afterwards the inflammation goes down uh, after you move. And so our bodies are meant to move. And, um, you know, I, I, I'd have to look more into the details of the exact physiology of it, but um, yeah, there is so much research out there that the more you exercise, and I think there's other things, the more you exercise, the more your gut motility works, which helps you poop it out better. So you don't reabsorb um, cancer forming uh, uh, molecules and things. So those are some of the reasons. Right. I would- I, I did hear also that mushrooms should be cooked and not eaten raw. Yep. Um, I, I sometimes have raw food chefs on the show and they don't cook them. So people are asking, what is the detriment of eating a mushroom raw? Uh, Dr. Furman has a lot of information on, um, there's some compound in the mushroom that is unhealthy and can be a problem. And it, you, once you, when you cook it, it gets rid of that compound that's, that can be absorbed and is unhealthy for you. That's as much as I know. That's great. That is great. I think it's, it, I just love that everybody that's come on this week either has a, a shirt or a coat with your company name. It's just so professional. <laughs> well, I mean, plant-based telehealth is why we're here and it's made a huge difference in my life. Um, it's made a huge difference in the patient's lives. And I want, you know, I'd love more people to know that it exists. A lot of people come to lifestyle medicine or to plant-based medicine, plant-based lifestyles, but they don't have the extra support that a lot of people need on how do you adjust your medications when you do this? How do you, um, you know, how do you, do you really need medications? Some people do. Some people with thyroid need thyroid medicine. Some people with diabetes need insulin. Um, but what we want to do is have you have the least medicine that works. Right. I mean, so many people think like that just because you're vegan, that doesn't mean you ever get sick or, I mean, I take thyroid medicine. I'm not ashamed of it. I don't think it's because I did anything wrong. I've been vegan for 44 years. I mean, people get stuff, you know, and it's not just necessarily because you're vegan. Right. Well, we're so lucky to have medicines when you need them, but we're also need to learn how to be our own doctors, how to take care of our own health because a pill like a pill for cholesterol may fix those numbers, but it doesn't really fix you. And so we want to fix the whole thing of why your cholesterol is high or, you know, we have immune, we get older. We're never, I mean, being vegan or plant-based is not going to keep you from dying. We want to be you to be as healthy and, and young as possible, as long as you possible. And then not die like Dr. Greger says the last 10 years of your lives with multiple medicines in the hospital, you know, decrepit you want to you want to live life while you're alive and we can help you with that i love that that um that you say it it doesn't fix the problem it fixes the numbers and that's kind of what keto does too it doesn't really fix the problem it fixes the numbers that's brilliant i love how i believe it's dr kim williams who says i know i'm gonna or maybe it's dr gregor i know i'm gonna die i just don't want it to be my fault that was dr kim williams and and me telling my father that here is your president of the american college of cardiology saying you should be plant-based you know, come on, (laughs) let's work on it. But it's hard to change what we're taught young. It's hard to fight some of the misconceptions out there. Um, And it's hard to remember, you know, you go to a doctor to fix a problem, but they just oftentimes give you a Band-Aid or give you something to treat the symptoms. They don't go to the root cause of what's really causing the problem. And that's what we do at Plant-Based Telehealth. Or we, you know, we try to. Absolutely. Tam, Tammy says, how do you feel about frozen fruits and vegetables? I was taught that they can be even more nutritious at times. Yeah. I love frozen fruits and vegetables. So my berries are mostly frozen because I found that if I get fresh berries from the store, they're one, they're not fresh. They've come from, you know, on the trucks from South America or whatever. So it's, they've been not fresh. They go bad so quickly and I waste my money. So with frozen, they flash freeze them right after they pick them. So you retain the, the nutrients and then they don't go bad. You know, I'll use what I want and then put the rest in the freezer and then use it again later. So I think frozen fruits and vegetables are great. If you can, and you have food near you, like a CSA or, um, you know, local grocers where or local farmers go get the food that's in season that you can have right away. But if you can't, 
that's a great way to do it. And there's a lot of people who live in food deserts and it's way better to do that than not have one. Yep, absolutely. Well, here's somebody that knows you by name, by first name, calling you Kim says, Kim keeps a lot of fresh fruits. No, wait, where to go? I uh, gotta find uh, somebody named Derek Olson ah, yeah. says that you keep a lot of frozen fruits and vegetables in your freezer. I do. I have a whole area for that. I also have a lot of fresh fruit on my counter because instead of having cookies or or or, or, um, or chocolate or my chocolate, when I have a craving for something, I go for my apple. Why? Keeps the doctor away. <laughs> but, That's yeah. funny. Is chocolate a trigger for you only if it's like the chocolate or like say would a chocolate balsamic also be a trigger? It's interesting. Um, I used to hate dark chocolate and I loved milk chocolate. So milk chocolate is my trigger. So I do everyone's, so since I don't love dark chocolate, but it is healthy for, it's not unhealthy, certain, you know, and a little bit of it at a time, I, I can have dark chocolate in my house, but I can't have milk chocolate or other stuff. So um, I can have chocolate balsamic because it's not like what I crave. Right, but, right. And, and well, good. And it doesn't have the sugar and the fat. Right, exactly. Okay. Well, good, because you're going to get two free bottles for being on the show and then you can oh. pick that flavor. So yeah. If the other doctors say, why did she get it? They've been on the show before. So you only get it the first time you're on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because you're the the first newbie to me. So that's That's why. That's wonderful. I I saw a question. um, uh, Annie says, are there foods to stay away from, even though they're healthy, if you have hypothyroidism? Uh, No. (laughs) I think uh, as far as I know, no, but I will, I can look that up to be sure. Um, I think there's lots of healthy fruits out there. It's interesting. There's a lot of misconceptions about hypothyroidism, which I can talk about in detail another time, but, um, you want, if you have diabetes, there's certain ones that are higher glycemic levels. So that's a different thing. Uh, so it's very individual. And, um, and then the other thing that I'm thinking about which isn't, you know, is avocados, not necessarily, you might be careful if you want to have a low fat diet, because for whatever, for medical reasons, um, that's one that you might want to have not too much of. So, uh, and I don't suggest, honestly, um, a lot of dried fruits for people who have gout, you can have gout flares with that. Um, For people who are worried about their weight, you can have problems with that. I don't, I do not like fruit juices on a general basis, uh, you know, you're taking out the fiber and some of the micronutrients. So it depends on how you're having the fruit too. And yeah. Right. Well, you sound like you'd be a wonderful doctor. There's just so that's a, I think the hardest thing is at the end of this week, how's anybody going to choose between the seven of you? And there's more than seven. It's just that right. we only could fit seven people in the week. Well, the, the, the first thing is go to the website, find out which state you're in. Yeah, and that's true. State. You know, that's I true. Cause even if they love them, they gotta be the one in right. your state, unless you're willing to travel somewhere in that state. Right. So I have licenses in 20 States. Um, that's great. And so that's fun. And I actually have people who drive over state lines to get to the state that I have a license in to see me, but um, we're all awesome. I mean, honestly, and I, I, you know, I cause Dr. Marbus wouldn't pick somebody that wasn't, I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh. I'm so lucky to be in this group. I mean, I, I'm amazed that, that I'm working with such incredible people. So, and we all work together. So whoever you get to see who clicks with you is who you should see. How do you guys have a Christmas party when you're all in different places? You have a zoom party? Like, yeah, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah, Alyssa says, I very much relate to Dr. Schroyer's feeling about chocolate. Milk chocolate was my weakness. When I switched to a very healthy dark chocolate, I gained total control. Quite a relief. Nice. Yeah. Well, let me ask the last question. Just a fun question. Sure. If you're being executed for a crime that of course you didn't commit, what would you want for your last meal? Oh, well, I am a pig. So my <laughs> last meal would be huge and it would have, um, I think some of the fruits I don't get n- normally, like I used to live in Sri Lanka, so I would have rambutan and um, a whole bunch of different fruits from there. I'd have tons of vegetables, um, just, I would have a buffet, forget one meal. I'd have a whole buffet. Like I've gone to um, some of the plant-based, uh, the international plant-based um, conferences and things, and they have buffets. I just have a whole buffet of everything delicious. 
That's great. That's good to know. But do you have a, like a favorite food though? Like me, it's sweet potatoes. Well, I certainly have sweet potatoes on it. Um, no, I am, like I said, I'm a generalist. I like food. I like all food and I like really, really healthy food. So um, I would have, I, I certainly, my grains, I'm a, I, I, I love my grains. I love blueberries. They'd be a lot. You of love my grains. You don't love my grains. No, I don't love my grains. And it's interesting how many people who I had, I got to tell one quick story. I had um, somebody who just poo pooed me and thought this was crazy and I wouldn't do it. And then she ended up, you know, um, going plant-based, which I was surprised about because she was already fairly healthy and thin, but, um, and then she kept doing it and I couldn't figure out why. And I said, why, why one did you start, but why two did you keep going? She goes, she started because of what she saw me look like and what it did to my body and my energy. But then her migraines that she had daily for years went away. And she said, anything that will take away my migraines, I'm in. And so she's never turned back. I feel like Dr. Gregor's is there nothing a plant-based diet cannot do? Well, exactly. it's been so fun getting to know you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And Pleasure I'm posting the, the link in the chat and in the show notes if somebody thank wants you. particularly to have a consult with you in the 20 states. Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, I love what you do. Keep it up. You're wonderful. Oh, so wait, thank you. uh, this is thank you, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Thank you. Good. Thank You're you. Welcome. And thanks all of you. Thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we continue with Plant-Based Telehealth Week with another fabulous doctor who's also a chef and he's going to be doing a cooking demo. You know who I mean, Dr. Scheuer, right? Yes, I do. He, I actually took classes from him before I even met, before he joined Plant-Based Telehealth. So Dr. Colin Zhu is going to be on and he's fantastic. Yeah. Can't wait. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank